Good morning, folks. Running a machine shop, how do we use technology? Uh, partly for the manufacturing and CNC machining side, but mostly in this video talking about uh, how it helps us run our business. It is a nice, quiet Saturday morning. Uh, there isn't a single machine on right now. It's just enjoying some ketchup stuff here in the shop. Uh, and I don't really work weekends anymore. Yeah, I'm here right now, but uh, I don't have to. And that's kind of the key thing that led to the uh, thought of this video is, do you own your business or does it own you? It's a cliche saying that has a lot of truth to it because at this point with Saunders Machine Works, you know, give it, including interns or part-time help and so forth, we have over 10 employees. Um, there's some cyclicality to that. And simply put, there's no way you could with stay sane running a business of this level um, without having some pretty good systems in place. Uh, we'll end this video, frankly, talking about uh, the most important one of these, which is our uh, home-brewed ERP system, which just issued, I think, its 700th purchase order um, and has been a key part to distributing decision-making and capability within the, in the shop and the team and, frankly, playing a lot of other roles. The first three are pretty quick, are talking about the CNC uh, machining side of things. First is tool life management. We really like it on the Haas. We're also starting to learn how to embrace it on the horizontal as well as the other Okuma. Um, I think the Haas does a really nice job of making tool life management pretty easy. And simply put, it helps us not uh, not have tools break, not have taps breaking parts, and, and just relax and not be stressed about, hey, is this drill uh, about to need replaced or is it beyond the load limit that we expect? Which is again, something you can try to keep in your head as tribal knowledge, um, but that doesn't work so well when you're running multiple machines uh, or now that we've got, uh, you know, we've got a new intern coming on who's been done a really good job at helping take over some of this work, it's not in any way reasonable to expect an intern like that to learn that tri sort of tribal knowledge or even sort of have a guidebook around that. So tool life management has been great. Second one is a little bit of a low blow cliche, I will admit, but Fusion 360 um, and not just regular old CAD CAM, but the fact that it gives us such a great way of storing templates for our data, they can be shared amongst the team and amongst new users. The fact that when we have folks come in that start, especially coming out of the high school programs or college programs, they know Fusion, it's just become so prolific. Uh, but for me personally, it has to do with the more advanced features that have started to really roll out, like so much good in-process probing stuff to update datums. We actually just did a video on this. Uh, there's more really cool stuff now that we just got a UMC 500 that I wanna play with, like the updated in-process part alignment. Um, this is true technology. It's not just chatter, shenanigans, marketing BS about Industry 4.0. It's actual legitimate things that are using technology that make it even easier to implement it. And the third thing is 3D printing. We've done a whole video, we have a whole page on how we use 3D printing in our machine shop, but the number of things that we print with ease now that help us make better decisions. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and hope that there's a part right here um, to show off this is what I was looking for. Has a magnet pressed into it, has a 1.03 inch gauge length stick out, and it relates to the correct stick out when we start running a batch of our, these are probably, I think those are six, those are six millimeter metric um, fixturing pins. Now, onto the real meat though of this video. I love what I do, but like I said, it wouldn't be fun running this business if we didn't have things that acted as force multipliers that helped us be better at what we do or more efficient at what we do. Uh, the first thing is Upwork. We continue to use Upwork on a fairly regular basis to find uh, contractors to help us for everything from marketing to research to quick CAD style mock-up work. We have an idea now actually to change how we store our fixture plates. Uh, this has been uh, on my to-do list for quite a long time. Instead of storing the plates vertically in these carpet lined crates, we're gonna build a slot style system that can go across the first bay of that racking. It'll allow us to store a higher quantity with an easier method of looking at how they're labeled and where we have sufficient quantities of certain plates that we wanna keep in, in inventory and where we need to uh, get more. Upwork made it quick to find somebody for very inexpensive who has more experience on sheet metal design, uh, get that design done. I think that's a much better way to then find a local company, there, of which there are many, who has a laser or plasma and say, hey, this is the design that we came up with. Can you help us make it? Uh, we also have Upwork contracts that are perpetually open uh, for graphics designers to do quick edits uh, for in-process 
like our QC runner cards that we've probably made nine changes to this over the, over the years and when we need to make a change, we just mark it up, scan it to them and they get a new one back to us, done. As an entrepreneur, uh, anyone watching this will, will kind of, I think, relate to the fact that a lot of this stuff we could try to do ourselves, but we wouldn't be doing it as well. And it's kind of the whole, it's not my business to be doing some of this stuff. And it's absolutely okay or even necessary to start to pay for the, some of the stuff. Because what was like that saying in life? There's only two limits in life, time and money. And they're a, a trade-off as you move through your business life. You know, in the beginning, I had no money. So time was the thing I um, could afford to spend on learning everything. And now that I've got to be conscious of flipping that because as a kind of a bootstrapper, I like being frugal and I like working hard, um, but, but both limitations exist, but time is usually uh, the bigger limit. So making sure I'm spending the right time on things. The second technology thing for our business is Freshdesk. It acts as a customer service portal. Um, I can't believe we waited this long to implement it. Uh, we did so earlier this year, but it used to be the case that customer service and emails, sales emails, et cetera, would just come into a personal inbox usually mine, and Freshdesks is a uh, customer service platform that brings it in as like a ticket. Um, this could be, again, for service inquiries, for quotes, for issues with our website, um, for order update questions, anything of the sorts, and all of those emails then go into the centralized customer resource system. Uh, I will we'll include links in the descriptions for this and some of the other services I'm about to mention, but uh, Freshdesks is actually free at the level we're using it. And it means if a ticket comes in, it can get automatically assigned to somebody or any of us can assign it to the other person and they can store canned responses. Uh, but the other thing that's really helpful is we have all of our purchasing and other external vendor type emails go into Freshdesk so that anybody can have access to it. So, in, so as an example, let's say, um, let's say Garrett needs a tool he adds it to the, our ERP system order queue that eventually gets pushed. The, and let's say that tool is purchased from MSC in this example. When the MSC order ships, all that shipping info goes into Freshdesk so that if Ed or Grant is wondering, hey, Garrett's out, but I'm wondering where that tool is, they can just search Freshdesks and they can see all of that correspondence, which is huge. This exists for how we order raw materials, anodizing, all that stuff. Giving that centralized access is key. So it, even if you only have one person or one team, um, or you're starting to think about growing, uh, take a look at a two or three minute video on what Freshdesk is and start to think about the role that could play. Um, similarly, uh, we use Google Spaces now. So Freshdesk is sort of everything uh, that's outside of Saunders Machine Works, so everybody that we interact with outside of these walls. Google Spaces is taken over almost all of our internal communication. So the kind of joke now is you're not allowed to use email anymore. I want no more rifle shot direct emails between me and Ed. Those conversations should happen on Google Spaces. Um, if you're familiar with Slack, uh, I think Slack is quite similar. I'm sure there's technical differences and capabilities. Uh, we looked at Slack initially, but Slack is paid now, which I would have been happy to do, but we saw the alternatives list as Google Spaces. We already use the Google Suite admin for our email and our drive hosting, our Google Sheets. So Google Spaces was a very natural extension of that. So if, uh, you know, let's say I'm working on the horizontal and I realize, oh, you know what? I don't like how this tool is acting. I will message that to say Garrett, who might be the one to run it first thing Monday morning. And that's fine. Garrett's the only one that's necessarily gonna see that when I tag him in it but it's incredibly helpful to have everybody else have the ability to see that sort of information over time if needed, or if later on you need to rope somebody else into a project or a discussion, they're able to go back and see the prior stuff. And it gets rid of a lot of the uh, CC abuse that happens with email. And Google does such a great job on search that it makes it so easy. So we have spaces set up with different threads on R&D product development, on purchasing, on general shop things that we need, um, on Lex requests, stuff like that. So uh, really been an absolute game changer. We've only been using it for about three months, but uh, we'll never look back from that at this point. Next one is Screencast-O-Matic. Um, I started using this on a whim four or five years ago, and it continues to blow uh, folks away, customers that we interact with, vendors, et cetera, where instead of a phone call or instead of an email, I will send usually one to two minute videos that capture my screen and me talking. It is such a game changer uh, when we're working with vendors to be able to show them, hey, this is the problem or this is what we don't like or this is what we're looking for or with customers 
we've got a customer support question or a sales question, uh, it's kind of nice that customers continue to be blown away by it because it's an easy win for us that kind of goes above and beyond and is a really effective means of communication. And selfishly, it's way easier for me uh, than sort of writing out an email or trying to attach pictures or annotate things and whatnot. So um, check out Screencast-O-Matic. There's probably similar services as well. Make it just super easy uh, to do screen, these screen recordings. I've done over a thousand. And for some of you that have interacted with me, you probably have gotten uh, one of those back and, and hopefully it went well. Next up, two different IoT style things. One, everyone has Alexa or knows of Alexa. So we use Amazon Alexa to control some things like uh, the compressor ball valves. So we leave our compressors on, but at night when the machines are all done or the horizontal's done, we have this 110 volt solenoid that can, uh, it's by default open, but the Alexa through this smart plug right here can close it, which will shut off air to the rest of the shop. Um, which just means if we have super minor air leaks over a weekend right now, we're not cycling the compressors for no reason. Uh, we also use WISE security cameras, both for security purposes, but also we have a permanent one mounted right here. Um, yeah, there are other ways to monitor a machine with RDP into it, et cetera, but it's also really nice to just be able to look through this at the control and see what's going on. I can't tell you the number of times I've been in town. I've been like, oh, something happened. I swing in and you know, a drill had a chip on it or broke, and it's a quick way of fixing uh, the machine and letting it continue to run. And finally, uh, Lex. Lex is our home-built in-house ERP system. Uh, we've done a whole separate video on it. Uh, we never intended to be functioning at this level with our own version, but when we were looking at all of the off-the-shelf systems, they just didn't feel like the right fit. So Alex and I sat down and started scoping out what would we want Lex to do? And we built it off of our own internal tool storage system that we had already written in WordPress with a little database attached to it. And it just kind of kept growing from there. Um, the, the intent was to use Lex as a proof of concept to show uh, the uh, Odoo's and Oracle's and SAP's that we were gonna meet with to say, hey, this is what we want and it just kept working and we kept getting turned off as we were still pursuing those relationships. Uh, as an example, Odoo looked like a really good ERP system except they wanted hundreds of dollars per month in perpetuity to make very simple modifications and integration stuff. Um, and that was a hard, uh, significant disinterest. And then some of the other systems were just, you know, they wanted five figures for integration. Um, and, you know, I, I struggle with this because I'm not actually advocating that anybody should go roll your own. We're not software developers and so forth. On the flip side, um, I will adamantly speak against how aggressive there is this adoption of without sort of concern all these monthly fees. I'm a little bit conscious of them because I think it's a mistake for these businesses to be built in perpetuity on so many subscription fees. And look, I get it. Perpetual licenses for stuff are just moving away. And obviously we use Fusion, that's a subscription, but it's the nickel and dime. It's the, hey, 10 bucks a month for this, 20 bucks a month for this, 30 bucks a month for this. And with Odoo, the base subscription wasn't so bad. It was, the, what annoyed me was how much it was going to cost to have any customization done. And um, the ERP system has to be exactly what we want and we have to have control over how to build that. And let me tell you, I am beyond ecstatic uh, that we had, we did it our way and it gives us that control. Um, if you're just a job shop, I would consider looking at some of the household name or job shop named ERP systems out there. Uh, but again, be careful of the, those fees. Um, just my own advice as an ROI and business owner standpoint. But Lex does so much for our shop. So anybody now is able to order material. If you look up at any of these items from the barcode on that pallet of uh, aluminum right there to the box, T number right there, T1560. Um, anybody can go ahead and add that to the order queue and that gets turned into a purchase order. Like I said, I think we've done 700 purchase orders this year in Lex already, which is amazing. It then tracks what is outstanding. So what are we waiting to get in? That's a screen that me or anybody can check and review periodically. And we can set up triggers to say, hey, we're expecting it by this date. If it hasn't come in, then we can act on it. Similarly, my wife now handles a lot of our bill pay. 
we can check to see, oh, I got an invoice for something, but it never showed up. It doesn't happen that often, but it is important to have that ability in systems in place because if you think about this business growing double or triple, uh, there's a lot of invoices that come in every day, a lot of freight that comes in every day. So you wanna make sure that you're not paying for something that never showed up. Lex also handles all of our active uh, products that are for sale, that it syncs with Shopify through Shopify's API, uh, which I will say has been uh, fairly easy to work with and pretty powerful. It definitely took some learning, um, but we're glad that that exists because for us, it's an incredibly important uh, for us to maintain inventory uh, accurately so that customers know what's in stock and we know what we need to make. So what's awesome about that is if it's out of stock, we can have it turn it into a work order and our work orders are now prioritized with intelligence. So there's a certain color code for an active order that we need to make it for. And then the next tier down looks at our current inventory levels relative to trailing 90 sales. So if we've sold three VF2 fixture plates in the last 90 days and we're out right now, that's far more important than say a Fidal plate that we sell one of every nine months. When we make stuff, Lex handles our digital QC system. So all of our serialized products have a QC sheet that we go through on Lex and it stores that data. The next step for us would be to pull that into some statistical process control, using that data to look at trends over time. Uh, we can do that. We haven't had to yet, but it's important to us to have built the system with that capability there. And finally, like everything in life, things change. Our business has changed a lot over the past six months, some of it in unexpected ways. Uh, and we've had new people come on, we've had people move on. And so the ability to get people trained and up to speed is huge. Most recently, my wife has come on board to help us with some of the order and operation side. They're actually over there right now, packing up some stuff. Um, <laughs> first off, there's no way, for, for years, we maintain kind of a separation church and state where um, I ran my business, she had her own career, and uh, we'll, I think we actively discourage the idea of working together for, well, anybody can probably relate to that. Um, and to this day, I don't think it would work great for us if she worked for me, and that's not what happened, which is awesome. She now works for the company, and she's now able to come here, help add value and make decisions with almost no interaction with me and I really like that. It's been a really great um, sort of litmus test for where we've gotten to. She's able to come in, fresh desks can tell her what needs to happen. Shopify can give her that information. Lex can give her that information. So when she needs to assemble a mod device, you know, when she first got here, she doesn't know what a mod device is. Lex tells her, it tells her what is the S number, what are the subcomponents, how do they go together, and what is the box that's used for it, and how many of those have we sold, what's our target quantity to have on stock, um, and most of that stuff went really well. Some of it we needed some improvements on and it was great to get her feedback to say, hey, let's look at revising this and improving this. Um, and as we brought on a new packaging and operations per person again, the key is, it's like the McDonald's model. If, if that saying is still true that the McDonald's average employee duration is 40 days, you've got 40 days to get somebody not trained on how to ha make hamburgers, to train on how to make hamburgers working at your company before they leave. Thank God that we don't have the 40 day problem here. But the point is how can you have somebody come on board, an intern, a new employee, a new part-time employee, and not spend days or weeks getting them up to, to speed and taking time away from our current employees, but rather a almost train, training free method of doing things. So what do you need to do? Where is it? How is it labeled? What are the quantities? What are the fail states? What are the checks? That's what uh, Lex as an ERP system has really helped us do. So as always, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we just simply put, couldn't do what we, we do without it. I remember somebody sending me an article of, if your business has hit this, this amount of revenue in one year, good luck trying to continue that for the second year. You're going to be running around with your chicken like uh, head cut off. And we're not we have these systems under control in place. Um, and the other key thing is it helps uh, separate me from the business. If I don't wanna be here, if I can't be here, everything can still go on. Parts get made, decisions get made. Uh, and that's really the difference between just being a machinist and having a successful company. So as always folks, take care, see you soon.